Hello and welcome to Demon Interviews episode 196. I almost said the wrong number. I'm your host, Springy, and joining us today is a very special guest. I'm Husky Ninja. Woo! Hands. Um, so, how are you doing today is the first question. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Um... So, have you ever been interviewed like this before? Once before. Awesome. Usually I have a spiel about that because most people say no. I'm like, oh, right. I don't know what to do myself. Oh my god. <laughs> Mention, I was out with my husband and we were interviewed by the, our friend Michael Lunatic oh. who owns Talk on Tour. And <laughs> after that, we started running around like a headless chicken doing panels and things. Hmm. I just walked up to him after he interviewed us. We're like, do you need a hand with this? So he was like, here's a microphone, here's a camera, go do it. <laughs> go. Make me content. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, the next... So, people can assume... From either they know your content or they know most of the people we interview on our show that you are, in fact, one of the cosplayers of the world. Um, do you have any other new cosplays planned to do that you're able to tell us about without me giving you a small fee of $5? I've actually worked on bringing back some of my older cosplays. Ooh. Which is Luca Megarine from Vocaloid. Ooh. Awesome. Because I used to do her default outfit a lot, but the boots died, as did her armbands. So I'm working on rebuilding those bits and bringing her back for next year. Awesome. 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 I only know one word, it seems. Either awesome or amazing. That's all I know. I mean them every single time. It's just those are the only two words I know. Uh, so, would you rather eat Cheetos or go on a hike? I go with the Cheetos because hiking can be boring. I definitely agree with that. The cats are trying to break in. Um. So. I'm. I'm, ah, I'm so stupid. I was gonna look. Uh, I was gonna look up your name again just to make sure I was saying it right. And I was like, "Where's my?" And I was looking at the question. And I'm like, "Where's my phone?" Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Okay. Oh my it's god. The time <laughs> it's the time. It's the time zones, man. <laughs> uh, so, on the interwebs, you're known as Husky Ninja. Why did you choose that as your username? In college, I used to do a lot of fan art and fan fiction, and it used to be Gesh Ninja, mm -hmm. which is Irish Gesh is Irish Celtic for curse. But when I was 18 at college, my dad rang me and told me our pet dog had to be put down because he had cancer in his heart and his lungs. Mm -hmm. And the vets couldn't do anything. So after that, I changed it to Husky Ninja. Hmm. So then, no matter what I do, a part of our first pet dog is always with me. That is truly heartwarming. There we go. I found a new word. That is Amazing, awesome, and heartwarming. There we go. I think that's a new word for the channel. Any <laughs> Anywho. Um, who is your biggest cosplay inspiration or inspirations if you have multiple? For that. But off the bat, I have two right off the bat are the Nightingale Gale cosplay who does an amazing Hatsune, Hatsune Miku mm -hmm. and Pixie Cake Face, who is an amazing cosplayer and streamer. Ooh, awesome. Amazing. 
I'm using all the A words today. Here's a third one for you. Be more shonen. Awesome. They're awesome. best known for their go-to cosplay, as well as their fitness routines. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, now I have to say a stereotypical YouTube thing. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you have any questions for our lovely guest here, put them in the comments section below. We have to get them back onto the show with the amazing time zones. Um, we get, we'll ask them your questions. And also, don't forget to follow our lovely guests on all the social media platforms. There'll be a way to get to all of them in the description below. And don't forget to check out their other interviews. Yes, that too. <laughs> Hey, shameless promotion of myself. Um, um, what is the hardest thing about getting into any of your cosplays? Say, the hardest bit for my cosplays to get into is actually the ones that have stocking tights that I've made. Mm. Where I've taken two pairs of tights and sewn them together to create mock stockings. Because hmm. it's always that way. I'm, I'm going to catch the seam between the two tights and end up with like tight shorts and then socks around my ankles. <laughs> huh. Well, it's amazing that you're even able to make them in the first place. I have no idea where you even start with that type of thing. Except through a video by the cosplayer Kimpatsu Cosplay. Hmm. I did a video of, are you tired of your stocking falling down? Do this! <laughs> well then. And she was a promotion for somebody else. <laughs> um, the next question is coming from a Mr. Zoom underscore 2028. Bacon? Question mark. Bacon mark. Well, I do like eating bacon sandwiches. <laughs> Hmm. Awesome. Well, excuse me. Oh my but god. But it's like bacon flavoring of things. Not that keen on the flavoring of bacon. Yeah. It tastes artificial. I agree. I agree with you 100%. Bacon, good. Bacon flavored things, not so much in, in, in my opinion. In my current opinion. <laughs> um. The next question also comes from the same past guest, an even longer and more complicated question. Peanut butter? Question mark. I said peanut butter, but sadly, I can't stand the taste of peanut butter anymore. I get it. Make makes sense. I mean, pe peanut butter evolves over the ages. What? What? love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches mm -hmm. and just don't get Oreos into peanut butter. Ah. Uh. But then my taste was like, this is too sickly sweet. Taste buds are like, you've had enough of this. Now we yeah. don't like this anymore. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Um. Since you're a cosplayer, and most people know cosplayers for going to conventions, how many different conventions have you gone to before? If you've gone to any, I mean. Hmm? Fifteen different conventions. Fifteen? I've gone to two. And me and my husband even met and got engaged at a convention as well. Ooh! Awesome. Um, next question, gonna be in the same line, we have a few con-based questions. Um, w is there any upcoming cons that you're going to be going to that you want to talk about? I have lots, well, one convention I have to go to this year, and then I don't have any till next year after December. Okay. And that is MCM Birmingham in December. Awesome. Which I'm only going to for only one day. Well, I mean, one day is better than no days. <laughs> Helping run in a cosplay meet. Ooh. Extra fun for the one day. Nice. 
Well, um, this this is gonna get two questions, but I'm I'm just gonna kind of condense them a little bit. One the the first part is coming from a past guest. A I'm gonna have to ask them how to pronounce the the last name of their social medias. Um, Justice Polides. Guessing. Um. Strangest convention experience, but we're also going to combine that with favorite con memory as well. Say, there's actually a few. Mm-hmm. Because I was able to meet four voice actress, well, four voice actors that inspired me with voice work. Mm-hmm. Those being J. Michael Tatum and his other half, Brandon McGuinness. And I've met Barbara Dunkelman twice. Ooh. And I've recently met Mila Lee, who's best known as Yuki Cross in Vampire Nights English Dub. Awesome. And I have their autographs actually behind my monitor. Awesome. I, I actually have, like, we only went to, like, ever two conventions. And I actually have autographs going up and across right here. That no one can see. Um, so yeah, I do understand that. And if I had better lighting to light up my background, you'd see a sign thing back there too, but I don't have that type of lighting. I have a lamp. I have one small Pixar-sized lamp right there, and that's all the lighting. <laughs> um, The next question is going to be who is your favorite character to cosplay as? That I have to say is my Yang Xiaolong cosplay. Awesome. Amazing. Yang Tastic. Yep. Because when I started doing Yang, I started with her Beacon Academy PJs. Mm hmm. And at the time, I didn't know how to work with foam, so her embers were made out of Pringle cheeks. And then after that, I made her embers out of foam and made her main outfit in a week. Awesome. And then I had to upgrade the jacket because the jacket died and made new embers that are better than my old ones. <laughs> yeah, sometimes things just need to be replaced. I totally get that. I need to replace Jean's jacket because it's falling apart. And, and I haven't even used a sewing pattern to do with them. I I mainly get things commissioned because I can't do that type of thing. But um, for Jean's gloves, if they were right next to me, which for some reason they're not, they're in some weird pit of hell. Uh, for the armor on them, I used plastic solo cups. And it, it works. You use what works. Yep. Like with my Luca cosplay, her headphones are actually sweet boxes. Awesome. Um. So the next question is going to be, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten, either in person or online, or both? Compliment I recently got was actually on one of my Ariane Glennis Maple cosplay photos I put on my Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Our person commented, oh my gosh, your cosplay is amazing. And when I messaged them to thank them privately, because mm -hmm. my reply button wasn't working, they said they haven't seen any other Ariane cosplayers in the UK. <laughs> and it's from a series called Skeleton Knight in Another World. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Which is a very good isekai anime. It sounds really cool, I have to say. Even though its whole first season only covers the first three books of the manga. <laughs> um, so, the next question coming from a past guest, a Harley F. Quinn. <clears throat> what are those? <laughs> I die a little every time I ask that. we got me off ebay and my t-shirt is one i got when i last met barb awesome 
amazing. Spectacular. Now I'm just and listing in off. In the background, I have Sarah Victoria's Harkoning Cannon. Awesome. Which is to scale. I'm trying to find more words, but it's all, I can only think of like verbs used to like describe Spider Man. Amazing, spectacular. Ultimate doesn't work in this situation. And neither does friendly neighborhood. <laughs> wow, that's. <laughs> oh, golly. Okay. Um... um. Would you keep a pet zombie or would you kill it? Kill it. Huh? Straight to the point. If they bite you. It's true. You can also go the Walking Dead route and just like knock their teeth out. Then they can't bite you. And their lower jaw. And their arms. Walking Dead is weird sometimes with their lore. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, just cut off their arms and knock off their jaw. Then they're domesticated. It's fine. It's just someone's family member. <laughs> uh. Anywho, uh, well, kind of staying on the topic of, like, horror-based things, I wanted to ask you, just coming from a past guest, a dark mean of the gone, our horror movie expert in all things Halloween, who would... Who would you be in a horror movie? Would you be the final survivor, the killer, the first alive? What stereotype do you think you would be inside of a horror movie if you are in one? one horror film I watched when I used to live in the States mm -hmm. called Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know who was the killer. Yeah. Because it ended up, these are the survivors. Yeah. So then it showed all the ones who you thought were the killers had been killed. Mm -hmm. So it's just a whole thing of were they actually survivors or were they the actual killers? Yeah. So I like the idea of being the survivor who's actually the killer. Awesome. Oh, golly. Um, do, do, do. I'm trying to make sure I don't say the same one more than once. Um, who from social media would you like to do a collaboration with in real life who you haven't done one with before? I'd love to do a collab with my one of my gaming friends called Weiss and Chill, who does Weiss Schwartz video content. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd just be really cool to do video content with him of the card game we both love, which is Weiss Schwartz, done by the same people who made Vanguard. Awesome. Awesome possum. Cossum. Try to look that up later. Cossum's a word. Uh, what do you think is the biggest misconception about you and or your cosplays? I think is I think I was born in the States. When I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was born in Essex. But I've lived in the British Columbia area of Canada and Colorado Springs. Hmm. Because of my age at the time and we were moving a lot, I was like, me, my mom, my dad, and my sister, I actually caught the accents on the plane on the way over to each place. <laughs> if we had never moved, I would have just had a full on, like, only ways Essex type Essex accent. Hmm. Interesting. I, I'm trying to use new words. It's just, it's really hard. Um, when all week you're, like, you only have to use, like, two words to describe things. It's hard to, like, find new ones. Um, so this is going to be the last question on from my list. And it's coming from a past guest, a another person who their username is uh, very hard to pronounce. Uh, Miyamoy... Mimoy underscore Miyagui. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. That, that, that's what I'm going to go with it today. 
what does cosplaying mean to you? I did cosplay. I was a full-on introvert. I never went outside. And I never socialized. And I had also, at the time, gone over a really bad, toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. And I saw on the t British TV channel ITV a show called Kelly Osborne turning Japanese. And there was an episode about her trying out cosplay. Hmm. It's like, that looks like fun. I'll give it a try. Yeah. And as soon as I did, it just felt right. And it helped me make friends. Helped me meet my husband. Yeah. And it even helped me gain confidence to tell my family members that I'm bisexual. Where for ages, all of them thought I was just straight and an oddball. And it's also a way I can help show, like, characters that a lot of people either overlook or just think of, oh, they're only strong, or they're only there for fan service. It's a way to show those characters are more than that. Yeah. It's like, before all the lockdowns happened in the UK, all the UK Ruby fandom, so young as, yes, the strong big sister of Ruby. Mm -hmm. But to me, during lockdowns, it became a comfort character for me. I'm like, if Yang's there all the time to help Ruby, Flake, and Weiss when they're down, I want to do that for other people. Yeah. So I do that through my cosplays. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find a new word, but it really is just amazing how... It's, your answer was amazing. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. My brain. Time zones. Um, like, a female cosplayer? I sometimes still get, like, bad comments of, oh, you shouldn't cosplay that character because you're plus size. I see that as a challenge <laughs> to prove them wrong. Yeah. By doing that, I've had other people who are plus size who thought they can't do cosplay or show their love for their favorite character. They'll see my cosplays and, like, how do you get this confidence to do that? Just show, I'm just showing my love for the characters, regardless yeah. of what others think. Yeah. Because the world is toxic enough <laughs> without it yeah. being in communities or fandoms. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. On that. <clears throat> Words. Um, so now I'm going on to the final four questions. The first one is, do you have any questions for me as an individual about the show in general? This is of yesterday. <laughs> what inspired you to start your channel? A tale as old as time. Um, <laughs> kind of, actually. It's, um, I saw... One of the one of the people who I was looking up to, um, on the tickety talkities, um, they were making a channel, just interviewing the biggest cosplayers that they can find, basically. Like the higher the number of them, the the better. You know what I mean? The higher the follower, the better, and all that. And I wanted to do one for everybody. So. Everybody can get exposure, can get comfortable on a different type of platform, can be seen on a different type of platform, and everything like that. So, I messaged my friend very late at night. It was, like, midnight for me and, like, 3 a.m. for him. Because <laughs> time zones. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by the word time zones. Um... And we started making the channel, and it started off with the longest fucking name ever. Uh, <laughs> but we shortened it to do interviews. And, uh, yeah. And, and now we're here. We interview anybody who will answer my mysterious DM on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> because I know it looks shady as hell. Uh, <laughs> I know that message does look shady as hell. Um, 
but that's also why I don't put a link in there because then that looks even shadier in my opinion um but yeah so we interview as many people as we can we try to help everybody get exposure in new ways and we also offer other op opportunities it sounds like now it's an ad um like um what we started doing during the pandemic um is that <clears throat> is oh there's something in my throat <sighs> i just did a lot of vacuuming and stuff with a lot of dust so i was like uh um That still came through. That's annoying. Um, like, character interviews is what we started during the pandemic, where we interviewed different cosplayers while they're in character. And it's super fun. Always super fun. Um, the most annoying to schedule sometimes. Um, because most of, most of the time, it seems, we do Ruby-based ones, and because they're already sectioned off into equal parts um so we have like five different people's schedules we need to align and with time zones and works and all that so that's always interesting to try and do um but yeah um we also do demon what we call demon media which is wherever i i shove whatever i feel like putting right there at the time um <laughs> Sometimes we play some games. Um, most of the time we review, um, kind of just like recap shows and movies and stuff like that. Like we've done Ruby. Shocking, I know. Uh, Ruby, we did all of Science of Freddy's except for the books. Yeah, I've, as of this video coming out, all the Science of Freddy's videos I've recorded will be out. Yeah. Uh,. Because we're recording this in at the end of September, just so y'all know that. So I don't know if they're still coming out at the same time or not. Uh, then there's... We do a lot of recaps of shows and movies. Um, and stuff like that. And then we do demon reviews, where we do... We just review different cosplay items. Like, I reviewed my Jean Arc Sword and Shield. Um... Uh, just pretty much anything you've bought for a cosplay can be reviewed and just shown off so everybody can see it. Can also go get it and just helps people get, helps the cosplayer who is reviewing it get attention. Helps the people who made the product get attention. Helps everybody involved. Um, excuse me. Um, but yeah, those are the main things we really offer. On the show for people to and people are always welcome to come back and do multiple things sometimes like we find a person for a character interview and like while we're setting that up i'm dming them separately being like hey we also want you to be on the show as you uh we've done that multiple times because that's just how it works sometimes we need a character sometimes somebody knows a person and then bippity boppity boo and we're all good um but yeah, um, is there any any other questions or for me as an individual about the show or about the show in general? Ooh, words. No. Awesome. Well, the next question I have for you is going to be: Would you have to like to return to the show in the future, in another capacity or another interview like this or anything like that? Amazing. Well, I'm very happy to hear that because you're scheduled for 16 more things today. Go. Oh. And we have five minutes. Go. Um, but next question is going to be, who would you like to see on the show in the future? I definitely highly recommend 60K Trace. Okay. She's an amazing cosplayer, streamer, and she's really down to earth and super friendly. Awesome. We'll definitely throw the very suspicious Instagram DM at them and see if it works. Um, 
lastly, do you have any questions for a future guest? This is a really good one, because it slightly goes towards what I noticed on TikTok during the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And that is, <clears throat> if there is an old anime series that you wanted to cosplay from, would you cosplay from it? Hmm. Because mm. during the lockdowns, I found a lot of teenagers were just discovering Vampire Night. <laughs> so there's this huge up boost in Vampire Night merch sales <laughs> and video content and cosplayers. Yeah. I'm like, I remember watching that when I was in college. <laughs> so it's a what curious thing of if there was an older anime from the 2000s or before the 2000s, would you cosplay from it? I feel like I would. If I enjoy it, I would cosplay from it. Because recently, going off of like that same type of thought, I also did see a lot of people cosplaying from old, now, older video games like Skylanders and stuff like that. And that's always great to see. But, sorry, my brain was fretting for a second. It's like, did I hit the button? Like a brain buffer. <laughs> my brain was like, wait, did I even hit the button at all? <laughs> I'm 95% sure I did. Uh, well, if you say in this video, you'll know the answer to that. Um, but with that, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy night and <laughs> talking with me. I do appreciate it. Um, and thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, uh, click that bell icon. There we go. Wow. That was hard to get out of my brain. Um, don't forget to follow lovely guests on all the social media platforms. And at least I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.